Hey y'all, I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to Morse Code. Today I had a very quick update for my basement studio. I wanted to tell you about the huge water debacle that we had. Yes, it, we've only been living in this house for one year and we already had a water leak. Let me show you this footage. Right here. The nail that goes into the this. Didn't sink all the way. Oh, right there. So, so somebody stuck a nail through our pipe when they installed this house. Well, I am so grateful we have a warranty. From the showing, those little tracks that they put in the wall? Yeah, there's nails right here. You okay? Whale sh- So as you can see behind me, the framing is up and the framing has been up for a couple of weeks now while we've been waiting to get the place inspected and get all the other people in for like the electrical and insulation and all that good stuff. But the scary thing was, it was over the weekend, I had shown my friends the basement and then I came downstairs after getting ready in the morning, one morning, and I noticed next to the pantry, there's this wall and the wall was making this like a hissing kind of noise and I did not know what it was but it sounded clear enough and it sounded odd enough that I knew something was wrong. I knew something was, I immediately just had this feeling that something was wrong. As soon as I heard that I asked my husband like is this coming from the power outlet because there was like a switch right next to it and was it coming from the Google Home because we had a Google Home Max sitting in the kitchen so I unplugged that and moved it and I cleared away everything to see if I noticed any kind of water damage because I thought maybe it's water spewing back there somewhere. Turns out it was. My husband decided to go in the basement and he found water dripping from the red and the cold pipes, which was odd. Like, why was it dripping from both pipes? We didn't really understand that. I'm so hey, pissed right now. Our beautiful framing that our contractor did is being ruined by this cold pipe, which is dripping from that hole and I don't know where that goes. I entered a warranty for our builder, but I don't even know how long it's gonna take them to get over here and fix it. It's going everywhere. There's dripping on this piece of wood. There's dripping directly. I don't know, I just got hit. There's dripping right here. So there's obvious water from here. That came off that corner of this vent. So I got a drip right there and I got a drip coming from this pipe. And this is almost directly over the AC and the water heater. So I went downstairs, just put a couple of Tupperware down there. And I was like, well, luckily the only thing done right now is the framing. So not too much was done yet. And it wasn't going to harm anything as long as we took care of it immediately. Like even the wood, it's still open and it's dry enough here that it would dry out pretty quick. But it was dripping on the framing, so I was a little concerned. So given that this is a brand new home, uh, it's under warranty for like eight years or 10 years or something like that. The first year, almost everything is under warranty and then two years, you get something else and then like eight or 10 years is for the actual foundation. So we were still under warranty. So I called the warranty manager. Something that I'm sure a lot of ladies out there have noticed is if you call somebody who works on home repairs or on car repairs or maybe even a doctor, sometimes they don't take you seriously. Um, I've had this happen three or four times in my adult life and I've noticed if you document something like with pictures or videos or if you have some kind of documentation through an application, uh, they're more likely to take you seriously. So I've done this with my car. My car was like sporadically revving up on the highway, which was very scary and very dangerous. They didn't believe me until I showed them a video and then they immediately fixed it and they did not charge me, probably because there was some kind of lawsuit going on with Ford or something like that, I don't know. And then I also had this happen with the leak. Uh, the warranty manager was just like, hmm, doesn't really sound like a leak if your water uh, measure 
isn't going up, which it wasn't. Like it, it, it had increased just a little bit. And I thought maybe that was because of a toilet or because the dishwasher was running or something like that. So we didn't see much of a difference as far as like gallons spewing out and increasing the amount of water we were using. Nothing had changed there. So we said, it doesn't really sound like a leak. And I was like, really? Because it kind of, it looks like a leak. Hey everybody, check out our new uh, water feature in the basement. Our basement comes equipped with a beautiful water fountain that you can probably put some fish in and they could literally swim around. Lovely. So great. So I sent him photos and I sent him a video. And then after he received those, because I texted it to him, he goes, oh yeah, I'm going to come over there immediately. So they showed up within the hour uh, and they determined that it was a water leak. My phone is waterproof. No worries, dude. There's your line. One of those nails is stuck directly into the hot water. So as you can see from my footage, this is the great part. The builders, builders, we have PEX piping, the flexible, flexible water pipes that can kind of move around and you can kind of bend them however you see fit. Uh, they're supposed to last like over a hundred years. They're supposed to be highly durable. But the problem is if you put a nail through PEX pipe with a nail gun, which is extremely fast and extremely powerful and extremely dangerous too, then the PEX pipe is not going to be able to withstand that. It's not gonna bounce off. It's going to puncture the pipe. And because we had been here for a year, it was a little odd that all of a sudden we're getting these leaks. Oh, well. Well, found another one. The water is turned off. This is just additional water waiting for it to actually drain out. But yep, that that's a thing. Oh boy. So here's what I found out from the warranty manager. The original builders did not put nail guards behind the pantry when they were putting up the shelves. So because of that, when they put in nails into the drywall, they went straight through the PEX pipe and the PEX pipe was held there very, very sturdy because they were stuck into nails, basically. They come in, it's already drywalled and painted and everything, you know? Yeah. Wow. Right through. So I was curious, why did it take a year for them to all of a sudden come loose and for my water pipes to start spewing water one morning and creating this hissing sound behind the wall? So my suspicion is that this happened because of all the vibrations from the framing being installed and all of the woodworking and construction that's happening down here is causing a lot of vibrations upstairs. In fact, I had things sitting on a shelf that fell over because of all the movement happening down here in the basement. So my suspicion is that all of that vibration made the PEX piping move or jolt just enough to get those ru now rusty nails to break apart and to end up getting pushed out of the PEX pipe. And I think that suspicion was kind of confirmed when I got my hands on the PEX pipe because I saw the holes and I saw where the nails were and the nails were just kind of chilling next to them at that point and they were spraying water and they really were. They were leaking water all behind that wall but luckily I caught it early enough that there was barely any water damage. So I showed my contractor and he goes, 
oh, you are so lucky all we've done so far is framing because the only thing that it could have damaged was the wood. And luckily I caught it so quickly that it didn't even damage the wood. So he was just able to spray some like anti-mold spray on the wood framing down here to ensure that it didn't grow any mold. And we had to wait about a week for them to fix the hole in the pantry and actually put in new drywall and repaint it so that it looked brand new. Wow. It looks so much better. Now hopefully we don't get mold from this whole fiasco, right Suki? We shouldn't though, it was super, super dry. So we'll find out. <laughs> Everything is fine now. <laughs> Luckily, this did not damage my basement, but I did learn something from this entire experience. I learned one, believe your gut, and two, make sure you understand the noises that happen naturally in your household so that when a noise sounds off or when it sounds odd, um, you know that something's wrong. And in this case, that's exactly what I did. Like, I immediately heard this hiss this hissing noise and I immediately knew something was wrong. So I, I took action instead of just waiting around and hoping that it fixed itself, which was not going to happen. So I would love to know if anybody else out there has ever had one of these experiences in your own household where like hex piping just had a nail through it. I was very surprised they didn't put in nail guards, but apparently they didn't have any places to put nail guards because they didn't have studs to put the nail guards into. I don't fully understand, but, but I am glad that it's, it's taken care of, it's fixed, and now we know what that sound means. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me on this video. I'm gonna go ahead and head out. I think it's dinner time upstairs. So again, my name is Shannon Morris. Thank you for subscribing and for watching. And don't forget to check out the links down below for my product sponsors, as well as every way that you can support the channel. I'm recording this snippet at a separate time just to say thank you to my four different product sponsors for the brand new studio. While I am I am currently in my bedroom studio up here. I did want to say thank you to them, even though I'm not technically moved down to the basement studio as of yet. So everything that I have received from my product sponsors are still in the boxes, but you will see those later on in this series. So first up, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Alienware for providing the two brand new monitors that I am going to be using at my streaming slash editing desk. Both of these are brand new 34 inch widescreen monitors. Having two widescreen monitors is something that I have been looking forward to for a very long time, so I was very appreciative to Alienware when they said, sure, we can absolutely do that. So thank you so much to Alienware. I also wanted to say a huge thank you to Uplift Desk for providing my brand new desk for my studio. So this is also going to be a part of my editing station, of course, and this is a sitting standing desk. So it's height adjustable so I can sit there or I can stand there and be able to do all of my work. I am a standing desk convert. I used to just sit at my desks 24 seven and since I've always had these kind of jobs where I'm sitting at a desk for hours, that's definitely not good for my health. I love having a standing desk and especially one like this, which is bamboo on top. So it looks really beautiful and it's also 72 inches. So it's huge. It's gonna have plenty of space for those two widescreen monitors from Alienware. My third product sponsor for the brand new studio that is happening down in my basement is Lutron who provided the Cassetta wireless dimmer switches. I actually have a few of these switches in the rest of my house so I already had a hub but I did want to get some of these switches for downstairs in my studio. The reason why I like them so much is because I can voice control these with my Google Home. So I can tell my Google Home to turn on the studio lights to 100% or 50% or whatever it might be and if they are with a dimmable light like an LED like I'm gonna have down there then it is so easy to turn on and off the lights or if I'm going to bed and I totally forgot to turn off my studio lights way down in the basement, and I don't wanna walk all the way downstairs, then I can easily turn them off through my Google Home. They're so easy to connect. There's also an application that you can download for iOS and Android, and I've used that countless times for the other Cassetta wireless switches in my house, so highly recommend. I already know that I love them, and I can't wait to get these things installed in my basement studio. I'll show you how the installation process goes, as long as my electrician lets me do that, because they are putting 
putting in a whole bunch of new circuitry for the studio as well, but if he lets me do it, then I will show you how to install the Lutron switches and then how to set them up as well, because it's a very easy process. And last but definitely not least is Ubiquiti and Amplify. So Ubiquiti is amazing and I've used their products for years in the Hack 5 warehouse, the Hack 5 studio, so I already know how to use their products, but they make networking equipment. So I actually purchased a new rack, a networking rack. It's a 15U rack, so pretty small one, but big enough for what I'm gonna use it for. And I also have a Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro to go in there. I have a brand new Amplify Alien for wireless network connection down there. I have a whole bunch of Wi-Fi 6 APs to connect. I have security cameras that Ubiquiti has provided. So my entire studio is going to be all networked out with Ubiquiti equipment and I can't wait to build my rack. That's gonna be a whole nother video that you're gonna see on this channel. So those are my product sponsors. And again, thank you so much to each and every one of them. You are going to be seeing them in future videos once I do have all of my equipment unboxed and downstairs in the basement. So I am going to be doing a full tour and I am going to be doing reviews of all these different products as well. Did I mention I also got a hammock to go under my uplift desk because I did. <laughs> I figured why not. All right, I'm going to go back to the basement for the rest of this video and I will see you in the next one. This was Morse code. This is my studio build series and I will be back very shortly with another one. See you later.